Hi everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Reading Nook. Uh, my name is Pagan, and today I'm joined by a familiar friend. You've heard her on the show at least once before. I'm pretty sure only one time, but I could be wrong because it's been one of those weeks where everything has blurred together and I'm not even sure what day it is anymore because it's been a week. But I'm so happy to have Eden back on the show with us. Eden is one of my good friends from the Romance Riot. We love her. Eden, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yep, last time was the first time. And yeah, this time is, go is so much simpler. I'm like, oh, I know what we're doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So come and join us down the rabbit holes of where we end up. But today we're supposed to be talking about Eden's new anthology that's coming out shortly. I will get the date in just a moment. But the anthology is called Love Sick. It is a charity anthology. Eden, when is this coming out? So um, the ebook goes live on the 13th. Um, it is presently in the hands of all of our lovely ARC readers. Um, they are digging into it voraciously. It is amazing. Um, I'm hearing lots of good things out of it. Um, I am one of 13, 12. Yeah, well, I'm one of 12. Mm -hmm. Well, 13 is one. The one short story is a pair of authors. So, okay. Yeah, we'll say 13. <laughs> I like 13. 13 is a good number. 13 is a good number. Um, and all of the proceeds from the sales go to the Trevor Project. Oh, and it will be, it's going to be available on Kindle until July is my understanding. Very so, nice. Yes. Are you guys doing print copies too or just uh, eBooks? Um, just eBooks to my knowledge. Okay. Um, I, I have heard some asks about, Paperback? Question mark? Can we? Um, <laughs> so there may also be a chance that that could happen um, as well. But for now, it's definitely ebook because we are all creatures of instant gratification. Agreed. And we want things now. I feel that in my bones. So you submitted a beautiful story to this. Tell everybody a little bit about your story and um, obviously no spoilers, but um, that way we can just tease it. So that way everyone goes on the 13th to go buy a copy of Lovesick to add to their Kindle libraries. So what kind of story did you write for this? Okay. So um, I stuck with my Ice Wolves team roster for I love the ice wolves for the short story i'm i am loving keeping the same universe um it makes life so, simple when you're all just stuck in one universe <laughs> absolutely it's like i know what the setting is i know where we are <laughs> um i have so the main theme in lovesick was to have love comes in all shapes and sizes um so this time around, um, I introduced a couple new characters. Mm -hmm. um, so there's um, Brigitte, who is, she's the daughter of the team owner. Oh. Um, and she, we open with, um, she's walking through the arena. She's going to go find her ex-fiance, who happens to play for the team. Um, and she comes around a corner and finds him already making out with some other new girl. Oh, ew. Is. Bad guy. I know. I mean, his name is Chad for a reason. I mean, he is a Chad, yeah. He is a Chad. Um, and Brigitte is a lovely, curvaceous girl. Um, and he found himself a stick of a puck bunny. Um, he had... There's also moments throughout the short story where she kind of flashes back to things Chad has said because Chad is not necessarily um, gentle with his words referring to her size or appearance, um, which is very rude. And that's a, the reason why, you know, A, he's the ex, mm -hmm. and B, I'm probably going to trade him in one of the future books because I am tired of seeing his face. And Fair. I created he him. deserves it. Trade him to a lesser team where he makes less money. Absolutely. He deserves it. Um, Wholeheartedly make the puck bunny go with him. Yes. <laughs> I mean, she probably would follow. So it <laughs> Probably. She's a puck bunny, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yes. Um, so that's kind of like the first scene. It's like, you know, she's like, 
oh, <laughs> that didn't take him long. Um, and then you're introduced to one of the two main male characters that we are going to be introduced to, um, who is um, Jean-Luc Robichaud. Um, he's from Quebec. Um, that's going to be very important later because he kind of forgets to speak English when um, he is um, distracted. Fair. <laughs> yes. That's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put <laughs> uh, it. <laughs> um, but he's golden retriever. He's he's Aww. a good guy. He's a good guy all around. And so he's like, you know, what are you doing? And she's like, Shh, you know, because she's trying to hide and not let Chad see her. And he does this like, get over here kind of thing. And she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, just trust me. So he proceeds to kiss her. And Ooh. then Chad sees and is like, what the hell? And it's he's like, bro code, man. What's with the bro code? And Robichaux is like, um, it looked like you were kind of busy. So therefore she is not your girl. So I can do what I want. Um, which is very kind of not golden retriever energy, but he took the initiative, gold star for Roby. Um, the, they then have to go meet up with Roby's teammate. Well, Chad and Roby's teammate. Mm -hmm. We're going to forget Chad from here on out because he works. He doesn't deserve meh. to be any more honorable mentions. Right. So Roby's other teammate, um, Kozlov, um, we've met, we've, heard of alexander kozlov in tripping he mm -hmm. got mentioned he was i don't think he was visual um i think he was just like a name thrown out there by other teammates um so the three of them um kozlov roby and brigitte they're like you know what we still need to go to dinner anyway so let's go we're gonna go eat dinner we're going to eat we're gonna have a good time you're still gonna have a good valentine's day because of course it's a valentine's of day of course it is yes Yes. Um, Kozlov is big daddy dom energy. Oh, I love that. So you, you've you got this, like the sweet and the sour, um, you know, the, the golden retriever cinnamon roll with the very firm, you know, forget about him, you know, kind of energy. <laughs> like, I'll make um, you forget. It's fine. <laughs> and, and yes, and they, they then proceed to because... It would not be a a triad, you know, MMF short story. I tried to put as much stuff in this little short story as I could, and it will eventually, um, once the anthology closes, I am going to turn this into a at least a novella, if mm -hmm. not a full length novel, because they need they need room to breathe and expand. So um but yeah, Kozlov and Robichaud um, try to make her forget that Valentine's Day sucks. Um, and yeah, Valentine's Day does not suck for I Brigitte. I bet not. <laughs> <laughs> With those two characters, how could it? It would be amazing. Right. So that um, sounds super cute. I am so excited to read it. Uh, I'm, I think I may almost actually, I'll, I'll probably pick up a copy of the anthology, obviously, because I want to support the Trevor Project and all the, your wonderful work. But I will probably also be waiting for the novella because I will want the, at least the extended version of this when it comes oh, yeah. out. <laughs> Especially when you consider how IHOP it kind of is because, um, I mean, Kozlov, obviously, with a last name like that, is um, perhaps from, you know, the European area. Mm -hmm. area. Um, so um, they tend to drop uh, pet names on her in both um, French and in Russian. Oh, I love um, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just like a little bit of a, a little extra flavor on top. Um, but it's, it was a fun little read. It's something I've not dabbled with before. Um, so that was kind of a unique experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I've come to the conclusion that if I'm going to do more than two partners, I need, like, I need to do the thing where like other authors get like the Barbie dolls to like 
figure out who goes where, you know, right hand red. <laughs> you know. I've never heard the Barbie doll method before. Usually it's just me like imitating the opposite person. Like what I would be doing if I was in their shoes, like with the hand maneuvers and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm sure it looks hilarious to anybody who's like looking at me while I'm trying to write going, if his hand goes here and this one goes here, is that still reasonable? Like, can you still do that? Like, is that a thing? Yeah. No, I, 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 I don't know about the Barbie dolls. I think that would be a little odd, but you know. Yeah, whatever. I, I need visual something to work with because at one point, um, because my lovely alpha page, who she's a sweet baby angel, she needs wrapped in bubble wrap and protected at all costs. Um, she's also the one who's like, if you are going to commit to, you know, going full spice with this, commit to it. Um, she's the voice and she's the maybe like the devil on my shoulder that's like you know if you're gonna go there you need to use these words instead um so um if the if the spice level on on the power play the short story is a little more intense than tripping for number 68 was it's her fault <laughs> yes it's all her fault <laughs> um I had I had kind of thought I wanted to up the spice level a little bit because I mean tripping was kind of on the mild side and I knew it was kind of on the mild side. But it was also your like, first and you were gauging your audience too. So Right. Yeah. And this one I think is definitely going to like, oh, oh, you went there. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, so even reading back, I'm like, did I write that? Yes. Yes, I did. Um but it was it was fun. It was a fun little adventure. And um I have so many ideas of where they're going to expand to. And I have like one and a half more books to write before I can even consider it. Right. No, totally feel that. That is a mood. And it's like, hey, I have this book idea. No, you have to finish your others first. <laughs> but but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was already it was already established that on the power play would be like maybe number four yeah. or five. Um, so it's like, all right, tripping is already out. So there's number one. Fighting for number 57, I'm in process with. I'm like halfway done. It's going to come out March 30th. But Ooh, that's coming up quick. It is. And I'm like, oh, what have I done? But I've got <laughs> right. on the cover. Are, are you going to meet that <laughs> deadline, Eden? <laughs> um yeah i i better because i actually have skin in the game this time because um i have a contract with Roz for oh, the cover okay. and for the formatting god i love her freaking face um if you have not seen Roz's cover work it's i adore what she has done with stripping and i've already seen the first draft of what she's got for fighting so i'm like yes this is it <laughs> And for those who don't oh. know who Roz is, Rose or Roz is affectionately called Roz, but uh, Rose Johnson, who was on the show of several episodes back um, for her work, is also on the show. So you can go back and listen to that episode later if you'd like to. And that way you can put a voice with the name that we are referring to because Rose is amazing. We love her. We love we also love her work. It's also amazing. <laughs> All of <Yes>. her work. <laughs> <laughs> like... If a, if a person could be a D and D dice, she'd definitely be a D twenty. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so multifaceted, so multi talented. Um, I have zero issues going. Hey, I need a new book cover, and like, she it's like she climbed in my head and pulled out exactly what I wanted already, and I'm just like, there you go, cut and print. That's it. <laughs> I love when that happens. <laughs> she will not accept that as an answer, though, um, because yeah, she was very no. This is first draft, but I am so excited! I can't wait to share it because it's going to be super cool. Um, but yeah, I have to finish fighting. I have to finish writing, fighting, editing it, and then getting it to her to format um, for the thirtieth. 
And then I've got to do hooking up with number 36, which was Jess and Bishop, who you met in Tripping, Mm -hmm. because they are definitely number three. And Paige will probably like chain me to a wall if I don't do Bishop next, because she is waiting for his daddy Dom energy to come into play, because um, she's very much about the numbers three and six. I love it. And so because I had, he's number 36, I just know he is. Um, she's like, I want him now. And I'm like, but I can't do him now. I have to do Kane first before I do Bishop. And she's like, okay, fine, but he's next. He's next. He is next in line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. After I get them all done, then I can go back to Kozlov and Robichaux and um, what all kind of fun antics they get into. Um you could and probably swing other. that into a full novel knowing you like i i could see you doing it easy oh yeah i mean the the short story is just over thirteen thousand words so oh yeah like you're a quarter of the way to a no- novel at that point oh yeah i just need to add like a big conflict because there's not really a big conflict in in this one of course this is just like building tension um and then you know build on like maybe like a little bit of the prehistory mm-hmm. so that way it's not like <laughs> why is chad so why is chad such a chad how did he become such such a chad um chad also has the nickname turtle um <laughs> which if <laughs> anyone who's been around hockey knows being nicknamed turtle is not a good thing wow. <laughs> turtling during a Turtling during a fight is bad, um, but he did, and the name stuck. So, um, it's no loss, no loss for Brigitte at all, um, which is why he's kind of a throwaway character. Um, I mean, I intended for him to be that way. The rest of them are sweet angel babies, and I will fight to the death for them. Chad is just one of those ones that just now. Yeah, you know from, like, the get-go, you he, you see his name and you're like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, oh, he's so gross. <laughs> well, I'm excited for this whole cute little uh, story that's coming out. And I am excited for, I'm just going to go ahead and foreshadow it and say it's going to be a novel. Yeah, I, I can see you easily filling in the blanks and all that for the story. So, yeah, I think I think you'll be good. It'll be a good time. <laughs> no pressure, Eden. No pressure. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm just kind of over the moon that it's like, um, so like <laughs> my my fun little hockey romance is sitting in this little anthology next to the likes of like Molly Doyle and her and her masked boys from Scream for Us and Melt for Us. Oh, yes. And I'm just like. How did I get here? <laughs> uh, you said hi to the right person, and that person was like, "Oh, is he? Who come join the foray?" Yeah, that's how that worked. <laughs> Something to that effect, because that's usually how that works. It's just like, "Hey, you're a nice human being. I'm a nice human being. You want to do this thing together? Okay, cool. Are we here friends? We go. Yeah, we're friends. We're doing this <laughs> yeah. thing together. Okay." That's literally how most anthologies co-authoring things, those things turn out to be. It's just like, I have this idea, but I don't want to do it by myself. You want to come join me for it? And then it's a shenanigan. And then it turns out to be an awesome adventure. That's awesome. So cool. So that that's usually how those turn out. But yeah. I'm excited for this. I love that you guys are doing the Trevor Project, which I think is such a great cause regardless especially in today's times. I think that that is amazing that you guys are doing that. And um, yeah, so everybody, that book is coming out on the February 13th, obviously the day before Valentine's Day. Go get a copy for yourself. Get a copy for your significant other if they read. (laughs) Go get a copy Mm. for your mom, your sister, your dog. I mean, I don't know if your dog reads. Maybe they do. I mean, if your dog does, that's pretty awesome, to be fair. But read it to your dog if you want to. Like, my dogs like to be read, too. My daughter does that all the time. So (laughs) buy a copy. Buy lots of copies. Just make sure there's lots of water handy. Lots of water. Oh, are are we going to have some thirsty moments? 
there's going to be lots of thirsty moments. I've got a copy of the art, so I've kind of been like peeking at everyone else's little stories because I'm like, I want to see what everyone else put in here. And um, yes, the variety is wild. Um, the spice level, definitely up there. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it, it, we've got a little bit of everything on in like the middle of the B dubs spice scale, just a little bit. Um, so I believe I heard that Molly had pegging in hers. Oh, yes. Well, then, oh, that's gonna be a fun time. Well, wow. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting you to throw out there, and I was just like, well, okay, I'm not. Like, I'm not mad. Like, I enjoyed that. That's cool. I think that that's going to be a fun read. I, right. I was not expecting that this early on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, we, we had been building a database of, all right, what's going in? Who's doing what, where, you know, what combinations, um, you know, who's got, you know, Who's got some sapphic? Who's got some some male male? A little action. bit of everything who's for got everybody. What? Um, there's some shifters in here. Nice. Um, oh yeah. Um, it, it's probably a little bit like if Baskin Robbins and Buffalo Wild Wings paired up. Um, you've got your 31 flavors, and you've got all the spice you, you could know, want. <laughs> all of the spice. Um. Some of it's kind of sweet, spicy. Some of it's more like, you know, peel the skin off your eyeballs, spicy. Um, and that's okay, because we usually like that. And then we go, can I have some more, please? <laughs> it's like, um, that wasn't enough. I need more. I'm addicted. More, please? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, there is... Over on Instagram, one of our ARC readers is going through and making a graphic. Each short story is getting its own individual rating as they go. And so far, there are three in. And I think I'm 10th in the oh, book. Okay. So um, I, I'm like watching, waiting with trepidation for... <laughs> for her to get to mine and it's like did you like it tell me you liked it <laughs> please tell me you liked it was it good did you enjoy it i like that i think that's awesome i love when arc readers do stuff like that and because it makes it such an enjoyable experience for the authors because then it's that nice validation um and then of course when everything comes out and you get all those reviews and all that but the reviews are for the readers not the authors but the authors do go read yeah. it because you know we're gluttons we for punishment <laughs> for gluttons for punishment we are there like oh you loved it oh you hated it oh i'm sorry you hated it why did you continue yeah. reading it if you didn't like it that's a whole thing i'll do much better <laughs> next time i promise i promise I'm i'll sorry, fix all Daddy. the problems i'm sorry you didn't like this character and thought he was shallow yeah no we 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 are gluttons for punishment we read them we never ever tell the reviewers that we have read them though because that's not nice we don't want to hurt their feelings and right. yeah, we, we are always kind to our reviewers and we love each and every one of them. Even if they don't like our books, we still love them. Yes. Yeah. Because they took a chance on us. Exactly. And, and we're not everybody's cup of tea. Not every book is for everybody. And it's, I have to, I have to tell myself with that day job as a librarian, because, you know, working in a library, you're, you know, recommending books left and right. And the number of times it's like, oh, let me wreck this book to you. I think you'll like it because you liked X, Y, Z. And then they go, eh, no. You're like, oh. I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Are you it's looking fine. for a different genre? Let me recommend something else for you. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. And I love that you work in a library. I think that would, I would love to work in a library and I would think that would be super cool. Uh, but I've also heard horror stories of the libraries too. So it's like, yeah. yeah, I. I but the, being around the books all day would be fun. That would be a fun thing. Yes, having, having like, oh my god, my poor Goodreads want to read list. Um, 
if anyone ever sees my Goodreads want to read shelf, they're going to be like, do you plan to live to being like, you know, 250? Nobody because should look at my Kindle the- library then because same. Yeah. The Kindle <laughs> library is still has books on it that are not on the Goodreads to be, want to be read. And I still haven't gotten to some of them on the Kindle list yet. Um, one of these days, I swear I'll probably put them together and then I'll cry because I'm like, I don't have the time for all this. Um, which is probably part of the reason why I do five books at the same time. Um, well, that and the ADHD. Yeah, you know, because you can't be settled focused. with just one. And then if you're like me, sometimes you need five books at one time because one book is traumatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's a whole thing. Like, I haven't finished one of the books that I got because of the fact that I I can't stand for the two main characters to break up. I know they get back together because the author told me. She's like, don't worry, they'll get back together. And I'm like, but you broke them up to begin with. Right. Like, you I am traumatized now. <laughs> <laughs> they were perfect and you ruined it. Why? <laughs> to be fair, I still have... Um... Oh my god. I think last time I talked to you, I said I was working on Spare and I'm glad my mom died. And I'm still working on those. I can't finish them. I mm-hmm. I do like a little chapter at a time. It, it's like eating like a, a single like chocolate from the Whitman sampler. Um, and then going, oh good, I'm good. It's a little traumatic chocolate at a time. A little traumatic chocolate at a time. Oh my yes. god! <laughs> I, I can only I can only do like a smidge at a time, and then I'm like, I'm good. I'm going to go read something fluffy now. <laughs> yeah, I I'm kind of that way right now. Um, with a couple of mine that I'm working on. And um, for those who have read my book, um, the Flames of Fandom dark version, it's a lot darker than I anticipated it being. I knew it was going to be dark, but it, it took a turn that made me just go, huh, maybe I need some therapy because I'm writing this shit. Okay. And you did that to yourself. <laughs> I did that to myself. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay then. And then I have like some monster romance stuff that's popping around in my brain. And my husband's like, no, you have to finish this one, this one, and this one before you go write something else. I'm like, but the monster romance is short when I could write that in like two days. Yeah, I could do that. So I should be grateful that he cannot see my Island of Misfit toys. He offers to read my Islands of Misfit toys. So I'm just like, but okay. And see, he's also like me. He's an English major. And so he also is an author and well, uh-huh. he's unpublished author. But um, yeah, he, he, he does, does all the things and then he gets a whole thing. And then I'm like, how's your book coming? And he's like, we're not talking about me. And I was like, but you are talking about me. So I want to talk about you now. It's a whole thing. Right. And this is why we're married and we love each other because we are two of these stupid things like that. <laughs> It's amazing. (laughs) I have, I thought I was going to be smart. Kate Prada, we love Kate. We love Kate. Kate is amazing. She's our not a role model role model. And in her not a role model role model state, um, she had shared with me that she had a doc of all of her, all of her whip ideas with links going to the doc of that whip and i'm like that's That's genius genius. i love it so i made my own because you know when you're when you're not a role model role model does something that's cool you have to do what the role model that's not a role model told you not to do but yet you're also doing the thing that is ingenious it's a whole thing if you all followed that good job if you didn't i'm sorry (laughs) it's a thing (laughs) it's a thing if you know you know if you don't that don't don't worry it's okay it's i think it's an adhd thing to be honest because sometimes you're just like you know i want to start a story and then we get distracted yes and the story sits there for months and months and sometimes in my case years and then you're just like, but I kind of want to work on it, but I kind of don't at the same time. And then you'll get that wild hair out of nowhere that's like, you have to go write this right now. And then you go do. Absolutely. And sometimes you finish it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you add 18,000 words. Sometimes you read, you know, add 20. 
But either way, you still worked on it. So it's a mm-hmm. whole thing. Welcome to the life of an author. <laughs> <laughs> Writer brains are fun. <laughs> Writer brains are chaotic, but also very fun. We we tell good stories. Writer brains, <laughs> Writer brains are like the doom drawer. Yeah. And you never yeah. know what's in there. You never know what's going to come out of it. And then you're just like, hey, I haven't seen this since third grade. How did that end up in there? You know what? I don't want to know how that ended up in there. And you're in a whole brand new house and a whole brand new city and you're married to somebody else. But you had that in third grade and you don't know how it got there. That's a writer's brain. Yes. My my island of misfit toys has 27. Oh, my God. Well, I don't know. How many does mine have? I've been here thinking about that. Oh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, ten reasonable ones that I actually want to work on. There's others that I may never actually touch because when I came up with them, I had brilliant ideas for them. And then other, now I'm looking back and I'm going, what the hell was I thinking? Like looking at the 27, some of them may not be like legit or they could just be like, a short or like a snippet for like a reader magnet kind of thing but they are still a thing that you wrote down because it has the potential to be a something but you gotta write it down or you'll forget about it yes 10 out of 10 wholeheartedly and that is the whole reason why the island of misfit toys exists that is absolutely a complete and total vibe and now you're Mm -hmm. sitting here talking about yours and i'm like I could work on that one today. No, I have other things I have to do after this interview. No, you can't. Stop it. <laughs> this is also what happens when you sit down with other authors. Then, like, the creativity will start turning. It's like, I could do that. No, you have life to do today. You can't do that. You have to do that. Okay, I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how the ADHD works tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Technically, after I get off of this, instead of touching my creative stuff, I'm supposed to be working on reading a young adult book for um, my one of my current courses. And I'm not sure if I really want to go that route because I want to do the I want to do the creative things. Same. And I don't. <laughs> and so i will probably have a moment of you know like slight executive dysfunction once we once we hang up and that'll be fine i'll be i'll figure something out (laughs) we we tend to make those ideas work and all that and then it's like okay i want to do this thing so i'm gonna go do this thing and then you have to do the other thing and with adhd the longer you put it off the more the panic sets in and then you get it done in like two hours right it's a it's whole like, if I thing. pressure myself about it, I will do it so fast. It'll be great. But if I don't, then it's going to drag on all day. Right. Yeah, it's it's a whole mood. It is a whole <laughs> mood. Um, so bringing it back from the ADHD rabbit holes, because that's what yeah. we do on this show, because that's where we end up with all of our authors. Uh, you imagine. <laughs> do you have any like signings or anything that are in your future? Virtual signings, those kinds of things? Oh, my God. Oh, God. I did a thing. You did I, a thing? I did a, okay. I did a thing. I did a few things. Um, so... Um, we'll start with what's most, most pressing and coming up. Um, so next Saturday on the 10th, if anyone happens to be up in like Northeast Ohio and wants to go to Panyan Bookstore in Tiffin, Ohio, I will be signing there with, I think there's seven other romance authors for their love notes and literature signing event. This bookstore is freaking amazing. They do like a genre based book signing like almost every once a month oh that's Um, cool and they've got a a sign up link on their website where you can you know as an author fill out an interest form and you write down your genres and um there's a lovely human named bevan who will then send you an email and go hey we're doing x genre on this date would you like to come and boom so yeah first signing that is like official is next Saturday and no I'm not screaming crying throwing up about that um (laughs) yes I am who am I kidding (laughs) Um, 
I sounded like I meant it at first. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. I'm like, I'm cool about that. You were believable. That's the important thing. <laughs> yes. Um, a couple of the of a couple other authors that I've already talked to that are going to be there are also it's their first signing as well. Aww. So we're we're all a bunch of baby authors going. Oh my god, what are we doing? It will be awesome. I remember my first signing and it was amazing and fun and you get to meet people and you get to talk to people and you get to meet all sorts of other cool authors and then you get to do the things and sign the books and then you're like, oh my God, I signed a book. And after the first one, <laughs> after the first one gets out of the way, then you're like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm a pro. Yeah, That's exactly how that will play out. <laughs> so that's the first one I have coming up. Um, and then I've got a little bit of a break until... May and then um, May 4th is Beyond the Read in Columbus, Ohio. I don't have a table, at least not yet. Um, I I was on the wait list, right. but um, I'm definitely going as a reader. I've gone as a reader the last two years. Um, last two years, it was in um, hotel ballrooms and it was, um, it took off like really big this year they have moved to the columbus convention center oh my gosh that's amazing i know it's going to be massive so um it's going to be a blast helen hart is going to be there nice um yes she's a sweet angel baby i met her last year um who else is going to be there shell bliss um brit andrews um, I want to say there's like 60 some authors on their list. Definitely check out their website because they were cool. Um, the, <laughs> the Saturday after that, um, I have a romance panel with Sarah Brown, um, the author of Tattoo Kiss. Um, nice. Okay. Oh, if you haven't read her books yet, um, she has a duology out. Tattoo, it's Tattoo Kiss X and then Tattoo Kiss XX. Um, Covers have a, an acoustic guitar on them. First one is black. Second one is white. Um, kind of heavy. It's got um, the two main characters are dealing with loss in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and also mental health rep. Lots of mental health rep in the best ways. We love it. Um, but she's a local author. I know I've met her in person. She's adorable. She's sweet. Um, we're doing an author panel together at the Dayton Metro Library. Oh, nice. Um, so, um, that'll be May, what is that, the 11th? Yes. Um, and then the 18th, <laughs> because clearly having two bookish events in a month isn't enough. You have to have one every Saturday. Oh my gosh, um, you're going to be so busy. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know what I've done to myself. Um, this is also so the then, same month as your deadline, right? Oh, no, this is two months after. The oh, deadline. two months after. Okay. Yeah. And also like two weeks after the end of the semester. So grad school's off the table. <laughs> um, deadlines for book two are off the table. I apparently have all this free time. I don't know what to do with it. So I'm going to pack it with bookish events. I mean, there, um, there are better ways. There um, are worse ways, not better ways, uh, worse ways to spend your time. So there you go. Oh, absolutely. And then the 18th is Bookfest in Newark, Ohio, which is um, east of Columbus. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a table there. I just paid my deposit on. So, um, yeah, book event after book event after book event. And then I've got a lot of a break until August and September and October. And ooh, I get to go to Sinful Signings with Andy McLean and April D. Berry and Peggy Sue and oh god who all else is going um jen from books and beer and broken um brooks uh broken book rex mm -hmm. um she's gonna be there um a bunch of people are gonna be there they invited me i was pleasantly surprised i mean um, peggy sue is awesome peggy sue's been on the show so is april april is also also awesome and has been on the show sorry my words tried to come out all all out at the same time goodness <laughs> gracious brain let's get everything together now um words are hard, <laughs> words are hard <laughs> as two authors sit here talking about how we're writers and words are just hard 
on a normal day. <laughs> so yeah, that's a whole thing. So many amazing authors. I have heard all about Sinful Sightings um, from Peggy Sue, and I've been kind of watching Peggy Sue's TikToks or Instagrams or both, maybe both, mm -hmm. probably both. Um, I, social media these days, it all blends together. So, uh, but it's I have been watching yeah. about it and I'm like, hey, this looks fun. I can't go, but I look, it looks fun. I will live vicariously through other people. That's what I do. We all need to take like a cardboard cutout of you, like a flat pagan. A flat pagan. <laughs> we'll just, take flat just, pagan. You know, hold us. your phone up and be like, pagan is here. Yeah. Call me on Discord while you're walking around. That works. <laughs> like, it's kind of like Big Bang Theory when, um, <laughs> when Sheldon made the robot. Right. <laughs> we'll just make you a robot <laughs> we'll just make me a robot it works um hopefully yeah. i will be good pagan and not try to take over the world so i mean that is a thing to be fair though if i was a robot i wouldn't have you know health issues so that would be a whole thing and i might actually right. try to take over the world because i wouldn't have those issues <laughs> i mean you can't do any worse than how the rest of us are doing with it i so. mean there oh, is that there is that it is true <laughs> take a crack at it right not right <laughs> So it's in full settings, your last one on your schedule, or do you, did you sign yourself up for um, more? <laughs> I did. Oh, God. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Um, I mean, if you don't burn yourself out before the end of the summer. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, there's um, Mid-Ohio Indies Book Expo, which is actually like three weeks before it's in full signings. Nice. And then... Um, and then there's Cozy and Bookish in Miamisburg, Ohio, which is just outside of Dayton. Um, I went last year. Um, Sarah Brown was there last year. Um, another um, baby hockey romance author that I met there, Kate Kamula, um, she was also there. Um, and they they both tabled. I went as a reader because I was waitlisted, as, again, which is a blessing because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have nearly the stuff to bring for a table. Um they both thought they were fully prepared with like, you know, like 25, 30 books. Um, and it sold out in like half the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it took off big. Um, this year, they set it up a little differently. So instead of um, having just one day, they're having two days of signings and they are splitting it. So um, like I'm going to be there on Saturday, um, but there's still going to be signings on Sunday. So um, there's going to be different authors for both days. Oh, that'll be cool. So you go the one day and you can see a bunch of authors. And then the second day you can see different authors and the authors from the day first day can go see the authors from the second day. And, and vice, vice versa. versa. <laughs> I love Which that. Which is great because like Kate and Sarah were seriously like two, like an aisle apart. And they couldn't even talk to each other because Aww. it was just slammed the whole time um and i'm like ooh. so <laughs> if we all end up on saturday together <laughs> at least you we'll all can hang out sunday. sunday yeah and then hang out um so it's um yeah and i think that's all i'm going to do for 24 i really need to like pay attention to like as i'm throwing my interest forms out because a lot of these events they'll throw an interest form out and collect names and you know who you, what your genre is what your titles are mm -hmm. and then they will go around go through and then start sending like an invite to oh hey would you you know go ahead pay your table deposit and come and so i've thrown my name at so many events and then they all kind of come back at the same time and then you're like oh dear god what have i done <laughs> yeah but on the flip side of that, if you don't put your name out for the interest form, then you don't get considered. And then you don't have book signings. That is true. And it's like, so I'm trying to figure out this fine line that um, is not an exact science. And, you know, figure out, it's like, what's the balance between? I did turn down one because, um, and actually it's not even until 2025, mm -hmm. um, because I got... I got asked if I wanted to go to um, Electric City. It's in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also the same week uh, as um, Northeast Ohio. Um, yeah, Northeast Ohio book signing, which is August of 2025. Um, 
I'm going to that one. That's mm-hmm. my only event for 2025. Oh. But that's, <laughs> that's a 2025 me problem and not a 2024 me problem. 2024 me is going to be like, girl, what have you done? <laughs> you are going to be a busy, busy bee. And I am so proud of you because the, you are st- technically a baby author but you are a baby author that is doing all the cool stuff and i am so excited for you i'm excited to hear all of the stories afterwards because book settings authors they get a little crazy and they're yes honestly when um i was doing my book signing uh circuit back in the day you know way back when uh now i don't really do a whole lot of that um but yeah we had whole hashtags on twitter that would be shit you hear at cons and shit you hear at book signings because some of the mm-hmm. things you would hear people say or things you would experience, you'd be like, what? And then you would die of laughter because it was that amazing and so random and awesome. And like, I can't even remember half the stuff that was said nowadays because that was so many years ago. But man, the memories of us just curled around our tables, dying of laughter is like something you never forget and it was such a fun experience and i do remember that one of the signings that we went to there was a sign that was in front of the bar and it says the authors are on their way to the bar no really because authors have to drink (laughs) (laughs) it's like the only thing i remember from that signing but man it was such a good time and you're gonna have such an amazing time at all these uh so everyone who's listening uh i'm assuming all these dates are going to be on your website right Yes, I do have um, on EdenKnoxAuthor.com, um, on under the the pull down where the three lines are up in the top left, um, there is a tab for events, um, and I I do need to add on um, like Newark just Newark just happened, so mm-hmm. <laughs> I need to get it added on. Um, but yes, I'm adding on all of the date all of the dates. Um, they're applicable websites. Um, any valid information, you know, like where you can go get tickets so you can go to. Um, Sinful Signings is almost out of VIP tickets. So <laughs> um, at least, so as as an author, you get to bring a personal assistant, whether or not you actually have a personal assistant on payroll or not, mm-hmm. um, which I do not. Um, all of the shenanigans you see on my social media is me. Um, because I am poor and that is fine. (laughs) Um, so it's kind of funny because when I got my invite to Sinful, I, of course I freaked out and like, you know, screamed out loud and all that. Um, so I go out to show my husband, (laughs) I got my invite to it because I told him, I was like, I'm throwing my stuff in, but it's probably, who's going to take a baby author that has one book? Seriously. Um, spoiler alert, they did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm like, oh my God. So, you know, it's going to be like this. And then it's like, you know, two or three days of this in Roanoke, Virginia. And, you know, then there's a ball and there's this. And he's like, okay, all right, cool. And I'm like, and you can come with me and then you can like go ride while I'm doing signings or you can stay by my table because you look like a giant lumber snack with, you know, those fully tattooed sleeves right and the readers are going to climb you like a tree and as i'm talking and like i'm all i'm seeing is the good business is good aspect of him being there right you know six foot tall a beard you know halfway down his chest um shaved head he yeah he's a lumber out. snack he is the lumber snack i I had him in my phone as the lumber snack and the lumber snack. I love it. <laughs> and like as I'm explaining like what he means to like my business model, like his eyes are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm like, and I, I'm all like, yeah, you know, and we can go and it'll be like a little vacation for the two of us and you this and that. And he's just kind of staring at me wide eyed. And I'm like, or you could stay here and take care of the youngest and the dogs and I'll see you when I get home. And he's like, that's a great idea. You can take one of your book people with you. Um, so he's going, he's going to respectfully <laughs> um, support from behind the scenes. Um, he's the man behind the curtain. Yes. Um, 
I mean, Wizard of Oz, it worked for him. Uh, it'll work for my husband as well. Um, <laughs> and so instead, I am bringing, <laughs> I'm bringing my alpha with me. <laughs> I love it. Um, she offered to sell her soul to me if I would bring her. And I'm like, I really don't know what to do with that. Does it come with an instruction manual? <laughs> um, amazing that would be a hilarious like little short story be like you sold your soul to me does it come with an instruction manual like i don't know how these things work and then just write a whole comical short story about what to do with a soul like do you put it it on a shelf do you put it you know like it's an elf on the shelf kind of thing like oh my god that would be hilarious you know do you you know try not to expose it to daylight you know (laughs) Does it yeah, need darkness? Do? Does it need rest? Do you feed it? <laughs> <laughs> and as we're sitting here, I'm like, Eden, I could write this short story. No, we have too many yes. projects. <laughs> Where's that spray bottle? Like, <laughs> know, <right>? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Fun times. Fun times. Please. Yes. Uh, but everybody who's listening, thank you for staying for our shenanigans. All of Eden's stuff you can find at EdenKnox.com. And you can oh, find EdenKnoxAuthor.com. Let me correct myself. EdenKnoxAuthor.com. You can yeah. find all the good stuff there, all the signings. Get a copy of Eden's books if you haven't already done that. And that is tripping for number 68. And also make sure you get a copy of the anthology before it expires. And it expires in June, July. Um. I think I heard July 1st. July 1st. Okay. So you have some time. Go pick up a copy. You can pick it up on your Kindle. There may be print copies, but don't hold your breath. That's that's a rumor. We're not entirely sure yet, but there will be Kindle copies. So make sure you get a copy for you, your dog, your significant other, everybody. Get a copy because it supports the Trevor Project, which is an awesome, awesome cause. Uh, This has been awesome. Always come back because I love having you here. (laughs) We have I such a good time. Anytime you want me. <laughs> um, but everyone, make sure you're following Eden all across social media. I will have all those links posted in the show description. You all are awesome for listening to the show. We thank you. We love you. And make sure you're taking care of yourselves. Be kind to each other. And I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone. And drink your water. Drink your water. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>